seconds. All right, now it's not legit anymore. Wow, we haven't done that bit in a long time, but it's right to Shem. Um, before we start, I just want to say a little tefillah um, for all the people that need it, people who are struggling with health, people who are struggling uh, both physically, mentally, um, emotionally, spiritually. Did I say spiritually already? But all the above, people need chizek, people who um, think they're far, but really they're so close. So Ymir Tashem, this tefillah should help them uh, get that realization. And also for the people who are taking uh, huge finals um, to really help them for life after college, Bezrat Hashem. Words hot as burning coals. The language here is so deep, guys. Loving God, inspire me and open my heart so I can pray to you with all my heart and soul. Let me pour out my heart to you like water and constantly vent my innermost feelings and offer you my prayers with perfect serenity, pleading and supplicating until your love for me will be stirred. Arouse your compassionate heart towards me and send words hot as burning coals from the supernal heart as it is written. My heart is hot within me as I ponder with burning fire as I speak with my tongue. Let me always pray with holy fervor and passion and let all my words like coals of fire. And through this, help me draw Torah teachings from the supernal heart. Let me constantly develop new Torah ideas and interpretations, true holy ideas that will arouse delight and favor before your throne of glory, ideas in which you'll take pride in all the worlds. Bezrat Hashem. Chavra, we're continuing with thoughts. Under a shadow. You may think you are far from certain major desires, such as the lust for wealth. Yet you may be in a worse position than someone who, who is sunk in that desire, because you may be deeply sunk in some other craving that wholly overshadows even the lust for wealth. So we have to understand what's going on here. Rabbi Nachman is giving the desire of wealth. Right, someone who's looking to become wealthy. That could be desire. It could be something positive. It could be something negative. But he took that example. So you may think that if you have this this desire for wealth, that you're in such a dark place and that you're so far and so and so broken, Rabbi Nachman is saying. Someone may be having a desire that completely overshadows the desire for wealth. So that person is dealing with both desire and this higher desire. It's really, it's such a deep Torah. Hopefully that made sense. If you are so deeply immersed in some craving that is powerful enough to overshadow another strong desire, such as the lust for wealth, you are surely worse off. It makes no difference that the desire in which you are sunken, less than the one from which you are far, because you are so deeply immersed in it that overshadows another desire. So like we were saying before, we have many desires. So you may think that you're struggling and your biggest desire is X, but really a desire that you're dealing with, which is Y, is shadowing the X. Is shadowing the X. Rabbi Nachman concludes, this is like a stubborn child who can literally bang his head against the wall just to spite his mother. Similarly, certain people are capable of throwing away everything, including all other desires, for the sake of one stubborn, overpowering desire. Bezrat Hashem, Chavra. Bezrat Hashem. There's a lot to uh, unpack there. Um, for me, I don't have thoughts yet. I'm still trying to internalize. It's a, um, it's an interesting, interesting Torah. Mm-hmm. 
Spanish interesting. Like you may think, like I may think that eating, let's say, is such a powerful desire, which it is. But there's something above the eating that it involves the eating, right? So they're linked together. They're linked together. Maybe what Rabbi Nachman is saying, and, and I heard this Torah before from Rabbi Nachman, is that you should be taking care of one desire at a time. So if you're struggling with eating, you only focus on eating. You break that desire. When you feel like you broke it, you go on to the next one until you break off all desires. I don't know if that linked to this Torah. It's the way I view it right now at this second. Chavra, questions, comments, please feel free. It's a, it's a juicy one. It's a juicy one. Whoever ever, if anyone ever sees this, besides us, us two, us three on this, please forgive me for what I'm about to do. There's a shear given by Rav Moshe, Rav Moshe Weinberger that everyone here that ever sees this should listen, listen to. It's going to be in the description. Um, in the shear, he quotes many people, specifically basing the entire shear of Rav Mordechai Yosef, of Ishbitz, the Mea Shiloach. And I'm going to attempt to, to the Sakem in, in, in one minute. He basically says, that each and every person has a certain divrei Torah, a certain uh, status that they that they are accustomed to, that they have to, to to rectify in the world. The question is, how do you find that divrei Torah? Then, so we look to Reb Nachman. Reb Nachman says, quotes a pasuk in Kohelas that says, "Beyom to, tov heye betov, beyom ra'a re'e." Uh, from Lakutim Aran, Torah, uh, that's from Kohalas, but he sa- explains in Lakutim Aran, Torah Lama Gimel, the 33rd Torah, which everyone knows log is like at the highest. Um, uh, basically, meaning on a good day, be in the good, enjoy the good, say, okay, I'm doing good. Today's a good day. Let me learn Torah good. Let me, let me, do, let me do work good. Let me learn uh, school good. Let me play guitar good. Let me see good. Let me speak good. Let me smell good. Hey, tov. Hey, tov. Don't when you feel like it's a good day, try and do everything you can to be in the good. You think it's a good day? Speak good. Yom Ra on a bad day, you have to look. You have to see what's going on. This is from Kohalas. It says this. This is a pasuk from Kohalas. Nachman. It says Yom Ra in all the bad when it's a bad day when things are going wrong. Look at what's going wrong. Don't just say, oh, it's such a terrible day. What am I going to do? No, no. We don't ask those questions. We don't ask, what are we going to do? We ask, what is going wrong? What, what in the past is happening that, that I need to fix? Rav Mordechai Yosef is this shiluv of these two deod, basically saying to us, use your mind to know what's, what's going wrong. We have to use our head to look at our desires and say, okay, I need to fix that part of myself. Okay, I need it to. It's not going well for me. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling not to speak to speak lashon hara. What's going on? What's wrong with the way I speak? Why am I speaking like that? Another thing I wanted to point out. So that's just on one leg. Everyone should go listen to the shir. It'll be in this description. Bizar Hashem. Um, I'm sorry, Jack. You have to put it there. I said it. In your, um, chat, in your group chat. <laughs> and in my chat. In your chat. In the, in the description here. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was you, did, you, Rabbi Nachman explains that the desire for money is he uses it as an example, but it's not stum, it's not one stum example. Rabbi Nachman explains elsewhere that the desire for money uh, is intrinsic in a Jew, not the desire for money, but a desire that could lead to desire for money. Meaning to say that the word kesef, which means money or silver, and the word kisufin are linked. Um, the word kisufin means to yearn and to, to hope for. 
So Rabbi Nachman explains that there are two ways that it can happen. Um, either a Jew can yearn for money or money will yearn for the Jew. But no matter what, there will be a certain yearning that's happening. When a person yearns for money, he's going after the physical money. The, the money is more important. That's the end goal is the money. But when a Jew, when a money yearns for a Jew, it means it doesn't mean that the Jew is just sitting by and he's getting money into his bank account. No, no, no. He's working, but he's working for something greater. He's working to build a base on Migdash. He's working to write a safer Torah. He's working to bring food to the table. He's working to have shalom bias. And because he's working for all those things, the money comes to him. Yeah, he's doing his work. He's going to work every day, six days a week, five days a week, whichever one you do, a couple hours, a, many hours a day. But the purpose isn't to get money. The purpose is to, to, to go into the, somewhere else, to do something with that. This is why there's either kisufin for money, where the end goal is money, and that's derech lo ra'ui, not a preferred way of living, versus the derech ra'ui, which is you're using your money that you work for to do something greater with. So. We all know that in these three weeks of uh, brokenness, of running, of jumping, of Jerusalem, of Beit HaMikdash, all the secrets spill out of Samson. We all know that. Um, and there's really not much else to say, really. Um, just internalizing the Rabbi Nachman Torah, but also the words of Samson. And, uh, none, of what I, none of what I said was my words. Just so you know, I didn't say any of them. None of my own words. They were my own ideas, nothing. I quoted from the Rebbe's. Well, you gave it over well. Involved. They gave it over well. I just had to give it to you guys. Unreal. Is that the Shem? Max, do you have anything to share before we conclude? No, just thank you for hosting this. Thank you so much for coming, both of you. Um, that was beautiful. So the, the description will be packed. Right, the goal is to just have a full description every single night. I think the limit is 2,000 characters. So we'll get there, Yemir Tzashem, one day. 2,000. So if you have anything to put in the description, just let me know. And Bezrat Hashem Chavra, we're inching towards Shabbos. You'll feel, feel more and more. If you guys don't think about health, happiness, and success, whether you're in uh, Washington, whether you're in Washio, St. Louis, changing the atmosphere of the workplace, having vision for the future, for yourself, for the kids, whether you're in the Beit HaMikdash, like Samson, this time he started out in the Beit HaMikdash. Yesterday he was running towards it. Israel Hashem Chavra will continue tomorrow with Kavod Shabbos Kodesh. I don't know how you switch that so quickly, we Kavod, um, and now he's part of this Kavod. Be well, Chavra.